Hello everyone, this is Ronald and uh, I welcome you to my new uh, series about Dungeon Universalis where I want to show you some techniques of the game, where I want to teach you a little bit to um, uh, for a smoother beginning uh, to play um, and um, we, I will follow the rule book um, and so we are beginning with um, some very basic things about the, the character stats the, the things like movement and heights and line of sight and something um, and what, what, what are the fortune points what are the markers for uh, mana and something else so um, yes um, one uh, sim, a small kind of disclaimer um, I'm not a professional player I, I think I will do mistakes um, please always check the rule book by yourself this uh, these videos are meant as an addition for easier learning but not a replacement for reading the rule book so um, please go sure read the rule book by yourself and um, yeah let's see <laughs> how this will work and um, let's start with some um, basic stuff like um, um, have a look over the character sheet so each character in Dungeon Universalis has um, um, has a lot of stats, and there's no absolutely no difference between a hero, a pet, a mercenary, an enemy of any kind, a demon, um, um, <laughs> a, sp a great spider, a bandit boss, or everything else. All these characters are characters um, are, are all these types are, are, are characters all of those characters have the same stats and attributes and um, the, the only exception um, is the what makes the difference is that the heroes have fortune points what uh, fortune points are uh, we have a look uh, after the uh, character sheet um, but let's start with it this is a character sheet that's a um, a block of it so you can create as many characters as you want you can also download it from the official website or at bot game geek i guess um, so you can fill it out by yourself um, let's have a look at a pre-filled one there's a bunch of characters a whole lot of characters i guess about 20 or 30 um, pre um, preset characters with uh, background stories um, so um, have, uh, some of them have background stories and um, you can use to, um, to for an easier start so you don't have to create a character you ha don't have to create a character by uh, by hand or with a pen and paper um, so you can use uh, the great app to do that um, and to manage them and to level them this is a lot of easier and faster um, maybe i'll make a video about the um, manual creation uh, or the app creation later but now we just have a look at what these stats are the attributes here um, th this is the card it's absolutely the same just a little bit smaller like like the one you have here at the, in the block so here's a place for a name for the race and the class um, like in every RPG um, here's a place for the value points. I'll come back to that later. This is um, the, the number for the standee of the, the um, like this standee, and the standee has a number. It's, this is not Larnak the Goblin, but this is a Warhound. And um, here are the stats you have movement, you have combat skill for melee, you have strength, you have shooting um, for ranged attacks, you have Armor. This is natural armor. The first and uh, the next is um, if you if he's wearing an armor, you can um, write down here the uh, the bonus for for the armor or the final value. Um, this is agility. This is intelligence, mana, courage, and hit points. Um, I'm going to uh, over that again um, to um, make some. Exp uh, exp Explanations. Um, this is for movement. Um, so you have five. You can move uh, five squares um, over the map. Um, this is for fighting. This is for um, how many damage you will make when you when you hit a character. Um, so if uh, if you use the same weapon like a broadsword or something, 
and um, um, a small goblin uses use the broadsword, he can't make as many damage as a troll using the broadsword because the, the troll maybe has five um, in strength and the small goblin has only two. So um, that's uh, where strength is for. And you have a shooting, um, which is used for com for shooting, um, for throwing weapons or for bows and um, crossbows and something else, slings. Agility is used when you um, um, when you want to disengage from combat. What that means, uh, we'll have a look in a, a later video. Um, you also use agility for um, for shooting and uh, for cal calculate shooting penalties. And oh, we'll have a look at that later. Intelligence is mainly used, but not only, mainly used for um, casting spells, so for spell casters, but also um, it's uh, the limit for the skill the number of skills you can have. Well, the skills, we, can, we have a look at skills um, later, but um, it means um, that a double of intelligence is the maximum number of skills a character can have. And yeah, this is the mana. Um, you, um, some races allow to have um, modifiers to the mana pool. We have also a look later when we talk about magic. Let's skip this for the moment. This is a courage. Um, you, you need this when you want to um, bravely fight against uh, undead or large, huge creatures. Um, so you need uh, a lot of courage. And maybe otherwise you may f uh, lose your activation. This is mainly for that, and this is your hit points. This is um, this is not a high amount for a small goblin. It's okay, it's fine. Um, okay, um, you have dexterity and perception, and every character has a, m a minus here, or which counts as a as a zero, uh, which means. Um, Everyone starts with, uh, with zero, and um, you cannot level this by whether in creation, in creating a character, nor by um, leveling through experience points. Um, you have to, you know, the only option you have is to um, level that up by gaining skills or by using items. Uh, you, dexterity is mainly used for disarming traps or um, unlocking doors. Perception is, has uh, multiple purposes. It's mainly used for, uh, often used for um, for detecting traps, um, to not stab in, or to uh, roll for initiative, which is in combat a very very um, um, great feature, but uh, also a required feature. So. You uh, you have to uh, you should have at least one person in, uh, in your uh, one character in your party which is, has a, a leveled um, perception value. We'll see later why that's so important. Here's place to note your experience points, and um, this is an overview. And you have it on the, on the shield. Here you can note your your skills, your and um, uh, your. Equipment, that's what I wanted to say. And um, here you have a place to note your um, your gold coins and your current weight. This is the 12 is your maximum limit. The 9 is what you're currently wearing. Uh, <laughs> you're not wearing what you have currently equipped. Um, so if you're uh, reaching the limit, you will have penalties uh, or maybe you cannot move in any way. So have a look at that. Um, when you're buying new stuff and uh, want to go to a dungeon, so at the here at the borders, you have place um, to lay down the cards for your body armor, for your what have you in your hands. The cards for that, um, you can lay down your skills and spells. It's easier when you have the real character sheet because it's much more space for it. Um, let's have a short look at this. For example. What's this small goblin can uh, have equipped? So, this is a skill. Just one example. I don't want to read that now. Just this is a skill card. This is an armor card. And this is a weapon card. So, you can place them at the spots, at spells. Small goblin has no spell because he sees no spellcaster. So, just to have a small overview over that. 
Um, bye bye, Larnak. We'll see you later. Okay. These are the basics about the attributes. Um, I've missed one. We've missed fortune. I wanted to say something about fortune. Fortune is um, the difference between a hero and uh, just a normal character um, because fortune is the way you can, uh, the, the meaning you, you can manipulate your fate, your, your fortune. That's why they're called fortune point. Um, so it can be used to re-roll uh, a roll you have made for a test or for combat action or something else. And um, or you can force the dark player, which is the overlord in Dungeon Universalis, so the your your enemy. Um, you can make him roll again um, if you're not satisfied with this um, with this roll, or you can prevent yourself from starving. So when you uh, get attacked and you have a, a, a very uh, hard hit that will that will knock you out, which is another term in Dungeon Universalis for killing, um, for for getting killed. Um, you can uh, prevent this by spending a fortune point. Um, we have a deeper look. Oh, we can do it now. So these are fortune points. And Lanark is a lucky guy. He has seven fortune points. There are characters or combination races like Ogres or some or Trolls. So they only have a maximum of two points of this. So um, he's a lucky goblin. He has uh, seven fortune points. He can manipulate his fate in many ways. So um, if he gets uh, a very hard hit, maybe by an ogre, um, uh, that will stomp him into the ground and would have killed him, he can spend one fortune point to, uh, to prevent this. So he will roll the die after that. Let's see. It's just a number uh, d6. He will roll it and, uh, with a 5 or a 6. Um, he would have prevented the, the, that hit uh, in any way. So, uh, like nothing had happened, but he had to spend this uh, one worthy fortune point. If he would have failed that roll, he would have the four, four and all over. He could um, spend one another, one, one another. That's wrong. He could spend another <laughs> fortune point of this. Uh, so two fortune points in uh, in sum and prevent the uh, the the event the hit in in that way. So. Um, yeah, but he can't do this much often, and if you think uh, again of the ogre, of, um, the, the ogre race I've talked about, um, an ogre can do this one time, and uh, after that no more. But fortune points as mana and as hit points can be uh, refreshed when uh, lodging in an inn, um, but that means we have a later look. So. Um, I want to say, show us two other markers. These are mana markers. Oops, no, these are mana markers. Oh, this is a mana marker. This is a, um, a wound marker or a damage marker, health loss marker, however you want to, to uh, call it. And they are often used. That's why I wanted to show them. And yeah, I think we're done with the, with the stats. Uh, when talking about um, the, the items you can equip, there's always a limit. You can only wear one armor, that's, uh, uh, that's pretty logical, I guess. You can only, um, you can have two hands, hopefully you, you still have two hands. Um, you can use this short bow only if you have um, two hands free for it. So in other words, if you use this, you have both hands fu um, full of it. and. You, if, if you're looking at the scimitar, um, this is only it takes one slot for for a hand, so you can have a, something else in the in the other hand. It's important for spellcasters because spellcasters always need one free hand if they want to cast a spell, and if they don't have a free hand, they can't cast a spell. Which is pretty logical. Thank you, Ronald. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. And if I do uh, forget every, uh, a thing, please write it down in the comments. I'll try to pick it up in later videos or answer it in the comments. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, close the book. Uh, I wanted to talk also about the basic rules you make in Dungeon Universalis. Whenever we do have, uh, do have uh, make a test against one of the attributes, or with the help of one of the attributes, we do it with two d6. These. <laughs> what a good, great result. So, and we always have to reach a, uh, I mean, 
almost every case we have to reach a uh, result of 10 using the two uh, the result of the two dice and the the attribute uh, which was a test made with maybe we had to make an intelligence test then we have to grow the di these dice which is a six and add the intelligence uh, <laughs> intelligence value here three which is a sum of nine which uh, is a failure in the test so once again this is seven plus three this would be a uh, success great if we do um, we can do this in an opposed role maybe in a combat when the, the enemy wants to attack us then we do row 46 2 for the enemy 2 for us and let's see a 9 versus an 8 and uh, Lanark has a skill of a combat skill of 4 in this case maybe the char uh, the enemy character only has a 2 this would um, uh, lead to uh, a 9 plus 4 for Larnak, so 13, um, against an 8 plus 2 for the enemy, uh, uh, so 10, 13 to 10, so Larnak would have won the opposed roll. You do opposed roll in other cases, like um, rolling for in initiative and uh, other things, and um, yeah, that are uh, the absolute basics. Um, roll 2, d6 for a test, and reach a 10. There are some minor exceptions from that. Um, maybe we'll have a look at them later or you will see them on your own. So, well, we have had attributes, we have had the tests, we have had the roles, we have had fortune. So let's see with some one th more thing, which is a great feature of Dungeon Universalis. I haven't met this in um, any other game yet, but uh, maybe it's a normal thing in uh, tabletop games, or like Warhammer or something else. But not in, in usual board games, Dungeon Crawlers I've played. So let's pretend we have a swamp here, and we have heights. We have heights in Dungeon Universes, we have heights for items, for, for furniture. Maybe there's a, a bed in the room, uh, your guys will, uh, go in, or there's a, a shelf, or... Um, um, there's a statue or column in it also. All these stuff have a height. Maybe here's a, a well. You could place it here. The well would have a height of a, a standard height. I, I, I don't know what the height are for special elements in furniture. I'm so sorry. Um, let's have a look. If I could use video editing software I would cut this out in the, this case but I don't have so we have um, five we have ground we have tables and chairs and barrels and chests we have another one with wardrobes libraries and doors or large statues and also we have large trees and walls and we have the sky there are those all may affect the line of sight or um, give you some cover if you're standing behind this not behind the sky for, uh, of course um, yeah, but I, I just wanted to show the difference of heights of um, miniatures. So let's see at Croxo. This is my miniature proxy for, for Croxo. This is taken from a Dungeons and Dragons Adventure System board game. Let's place him here. It's just for to have something standing, standing there. Uh, put him here. So Croxo. Is, has average height. We have Larnak here, we've seen his character uh, sheet right before. Place him here and we can see or we <laughs> um, he's smaller than Kroxa, about half. So Larnak is uh, indeed not, not only the proxy miniature here, but, but be, uh, Larnak in the game is small and Kroxa is average we also have trolls and ogres and they are large this is different in the proxy miniature this guy is from decent 2 but it will do the trick so and then i will rearrange them a bit because we need a little bit space then we have huge creatures this bad guy is from legend of drills 
Dungeons and Dragons. So now we can see him better, I guess. So this is really, really important for many of the rules of Dungeon Universalis. For line of sight, for engaging enemies, for combat in general, for penalties or bonuses when shooting, for casting spells, um, for many in, in many cases for jumping over pits, for um, falling into pits, for oh, there are many many things. That's why I, I wanted to demonstrate this with these graded unpainted miniatures. <laughs> and um, I do this. So I want to make it uh, the video with, um, uh, an exclusive video with line of sight or make it in the combat. Um, so I don't want to get into detail here. Um, let's see how I can show this. So if we would play um, Descent 2 for example or any other, uh, other dungeon crawler I've played. If we would rearrange this and let's say this ogre wants to attack this bad guy, huge guy here. Maybe I can adjust the camera a little bit. Woo! To make it a little bit more impressive. So, as you can see, this is a large guy, this is a small guy, this is the huge guy. And um, when playing Descent 2, for example, this little, little tiny goblin would block the line of sight for this. Now, okay, you, you will see, uh, you, if you're a decent two player, now you, um, you take the, the line of sight from uh, any, um, any point of the square to any point, so you have line of sight, okay. But let's do this. So you can't draw a line for Croxer, so there's no line of sight. Um, in other games, and done, you have line of sight because. Larnak is smaller than Croxo. Croxo can look over him easily and in any other way, um, even if uh, even if there's a, also a, an average size character, like my um, mage proxy here. Um, he would also see the huge creature because the huge creature is, is huge. You always can the huge creature, depending less where the um, is standing in the way, except of another huge creature. Even a large creature wouldn't block the view, the line of sight to this guy, because he's smaller than this one. And this is important, very important for all the purposes I just told you. And um, these are my miniature proxies I'm using. The stand is coming with um, Dungeon Universalis also have this and you can see it very good too. There are definitely differences in size. And um, another great thing is in any other game, this is uh, an, an outlook to, to the damage video I will, I will want to make. If this poor goblin standing in front of this huge whatever this is, demon lord over whatever. Um, coming back to Decent 2 for example, or an, another dungeon crawler, if he's gonna hit him, um, you roll for the damage, yeah, the goblin gets 10 damage points, whatever, and, and uh, maybe he's not still alive, and he's standing there, and the next round he takes his tiny dagger or <laughs> tiny short bow and uh, shoots uh, against this guy as n nothing would have happened. No, in Dungeon Universalist you have no, you have more than this. You have real um, co you have conditions if you are um, a much greater um, a much greater um, um, character hitting a, a smaller gra um, uh, character. Um, there's a, a, a table you can uh, look in if, uh, if it is a critical hit or maybe um, just because he's uh, larger than the other one, um, he will get knocked down or at least stunned or something else. So um, um, like this is kind of uh, realistic, um, yeah. If the big bad <laughs> demon lord is hitting you, the, the small goblin, he won't stand up so fast again. Even if he's still alive. Okay, so that's for now. I will make a break. The next video, I think, 
will be about moving and terrain and um, the actions you can make and I will make uh, I don't want to, to go through um, every action you can do you can do, uh, read this in the rule book on your own because there are many actions that aren't, aren't so um, used so oftenly like swimming or jumping great jumps and, and something else so I want to, to focus on the um, the most um, commonly used actions to keep the videos short but I see we, are, we have just 30 minutes uh, almost 30 minutes done yet and yeah let me um, yeah let me hear if you if I want uh, if I shall explain something more in detail if uh, I was too fast if it was too unprecise or whatever and um, yeah leave me a comment if uh, well, and what you're interested in any critics and um, yeah stay tuned for uh, another content and uh, have a great day enjoy Dungeon Universalis bye bye